welcome to Soapbox. I'm your host, Mickey Angeline. Tonight's topic is a hot one. I'm directly here from Sacramento, and I have two guests to discuss this heated topic. But before we get into that, I'd like to go over and give a shout out to our wonderful sponsors. Pieces Pizza by The Slice, including low fats, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. They are located at 1309 21st Street in Sacramento. You can give them a call and order at 916-441-1949. The Humor Times bills itself as the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription, in print, or digital format. Subscription info along with cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more info can be found at humortimes.com and Call them at 916-455-1217. And finally, we want to welcome our sponsors, Doctors Clinic for Men, Sacramento's only clinic devoted to the treatment of erectile dysfunction. For more information, go to sacdc4m.com or call 916-482-5200. And don't forget to check out on archives of past shows on our new YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube.com and type in Soapbox Sacramento in the search box. So we are back. I want to welcome my two guests today. We have with me Beverly Kearney, founder of the Love is Love movement, and John Hayden, the LGBTQI activist. Thank you, you two, for being on the show today. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Absolutely. So our topic today that we're going to discuss, a very heated topic about hate crime happening here in our country, but more specifically here in our very hometown, in Sacramento. More recently, uh, you all heard of the events that happened a couple of weeks back in Orlando, Florida, that horrific, horrific event with the, the shooting of the, and the 49 victims that died. The, and that was clearly a hate crime. It was believed it was also a terrorist sort of thing. But not only was that, that hit the nation, I know that affected you, that affected you. We then recently had an individual that decided to take it upon himself to preach from his church. Not only did he feel that it was justified, that he felt more people should have died. And there's more to that. I don't really want to get into that. You may know what we're talking about. It is the Verity Baptist Church in Sacramento. So because of that happened, my good friends here, not just guests, of course, John, decided to create a peaceful rally and protest for this church, and then he was joined by my other friend, Beverly, who became the co-organizer. So please um, let the, the audience know, what inspired you to want to create the rally and the protest? Well, I think uh, when I started the event on Facebook uh, one week before the actual rally was planned, I had just intended it to be something that was very small, very rather intimate than what it turned out to be. Um, exponentially that grew at a rate that I was not able to contain within the next few days I believe by Tuesday or Wednesday I was overwhelmed by people reaching out uh, people that were concerned like myself of people that were doing these kinds of things in Sacramento um, so I asked Beverly here to um, help me organize this event and my intention behind it was to really focus on the organizing of a peaceful rally that could bring together the gay, gay and lesbian community with the bisexual transgender community as well to address the problem of hatred in our in our society um, one thing that i wanted to address in that was that communicating the message that this is in our backyard you know i'm not going to wait for something like this to happen in sacramento the tr the tragedy that happened in Orlando was unconscionable. Um, it hit our community across the nation very hard. And it took away the sense of peace that I think a lot of us have become complacent with, specifically in Sacramento. Um, I have been contacted by a number of people thanking me for bringing people together again in a society where we really have been kind of splintered. And it's my hope that we can continue this kind of movement and, and keep this momentum going. 
that we really have to re-energize re and reorganize our community. And um, that's why I'm so thankful that I met Beverly because she's the kind of lady that I know can help me do this. Exactly, because I mean, you've been active in our, in our community for so long, but Beverly has extreme like, history with doing protests. This isn't actually your first one, is it, Beverly? No, our first Love is Love movement was, we founded it about three years ago when we protested out at Westfield Galleria in Roseville. I remember that. Um, <clears throat> so that was our, you know, I had started that much like John started the Verity Baptist rally in, you know, this, they had, security had asked a gay couple to leave the mall because they were being too affectionate, basically. Um, and I got really mad about it and decided we needed to stand up for it. And the same type of thing happened where, um, you know, overnight there were thousands of people invited. And um, my dear friend Jovi Radke called me and said, honey, I have 12 invitations to your event. I said, yeah. She goes, do you know how many people are invited? I said, yeah. She said, do you want some help? I said, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how we sort of started Love is Love. And we were very clear with our message. Um, and our code of conduct that this is, you know, everybody's angry when these things happen, but sending a message of love in the face of hatred is so much more powerful than just being angry and lashing out. And it creates such a difference and it creates such a change that can really be felt as opposed to just reacting out in anger. It doesn't mean we're not angry and it doesn't mean you can't be angry. It's just a different way to go about that. It's just a different way to channel that anger into something. Using and, love to diffuse hate. Exactly. And you know, a lot of the root cause of anger is also grief. And so I think that's where a lot of that comes from. And so love is love has taken some flack for not being more angry or, you know, in your face type of actions. And that's just really? not who we are. Absolutely. Really? And we, d yeah, we did at this event too. Uncommon. Um, I was, I wasn't shocked that people are so angry that they want to act out. And it was just like I was commenting to Beverly earlier today is that if we live in a society of an eye for an eye, what do we end up with? A world of people that are blind. And if we perpetuate the same violence that is acted upon us, then our message is lost. We can't, we show, we effectively show the rest of society that we cannot communicate better than the people that we are trying to show are wrong against the cause that we are trying to defend, which is our right and freedoms. And I, I've seen the Facebook posts of, you know, we need to be up in these people's faces. We need to kind of sound the bugle and charge, you know, a, a fight against the people that we're, we're protesting. And, and my response to them is, has, and always will be, it's not the answer. If what, if I follow the steps of one of my favorite people in the world and mentors, Martin Luther King Jr., it is that he showed the, not only the country but the world that peace works. And if we take a stand against violence, even in issues that are most heartfelt to us, then that's how we can show progress to our own people and the rest of society. And you, you did that, both of you, because I attended the protest. It was my first major one. I've been to a couple in the past, but nothing as heated and as controversial. And honestly, the moment I had posted about this and that I was going to this, I invite anyone who, not even just, not even just the community, the LGBT community, but those who support, mm -hmm. the, the straight folk that support, the because allies. they're out there, our allies. and. So many private messages I would receive, please be careful, please be safe. Please be careful, please be safe. You know, and I said, we plan on doing it. And I have to, hats off to both of you because you did just that. I mean, you met with Sheriff Department. You were very clear on what we were doing, right, as a whole. Absolutely. Um, because their side, now, from what I understand, they, they brought out the SWAT and wanted, they had the FBI <laughs> yeah. there, right? Yeah. The FBI. It was, they were. You know, they, I remember seeing SWAT the- SWAT was hiding. Yeah, I remember this seeing the, the huge camera that they had to watch everything. And mm -hmm. now I don't know how true this is, but it was rumored that the church's um, ushers were, were packing. Armed. They were armed with weapons. So I think that safety is definitely, it was definitely a concern because uh, we were worried if people should bring kids. I remember absolutely. that. Absolutely. And, you know, not obviously these people do not represent even the majority of the faith community. Um, but it is scary. And we did have those concerns. 
Um, we also have concerns because, yes, Orlando targeted the LGBTQ community, but it also specifically targeted the QPOC community. And so, <clears throat> you know, we also had the conversations with law enforcement about how do we keep people safe and how do we keep this peaceful? And you need to be aware that members of our QPOC community are going to feel unsafe just because of your very presence. And right. so we did have those conversations. Um, I know there was some, you know, I heard some feedback from people about why were there so many cops here? Why were there? And it's a really delicate balance. It's you are dealing with people that clearly are not rational thinkers. Correct. The and ones we were posting against, did, exactly. right? And we did hear that there, you know, that there aren't their guards were armed for the morning and the evening service. So wow. you're dealing with those types of people. And then we've got, you know, thousands of people showing up. And our primary concern was safety. So we addressed Absolutely. all the issues as best that we could, um, while being in mind all of the other issues that surround that and that surround law enforcement and the QPOC community. And so I think we did, um, I think there were a few people that were, you know, a little not consistent with our message, but I think I think overall, part, it was amazing. The majority. Because I went majority. around and I did um, the Facebook live feed love Facebook live feed <laughs> um, did and a lot of the friends that couldn't be there were very grateful for that because they wanted to see and we got to see from the inside just how peaceful Absolutely. and loving right. the, the energy that was displayed there that was amazing right the love it was so vibrant I think my favorite was the glitter Baptist booth <laughs> Right? This, <laughs> these ladies had the, I, these buckets. I got baptized in purple. Yeah, got these buckets, <laughs> and we're just baptizing with love using glitter, you know. How did I not get glitter? I don't know, I Beverly. Don't know. Have you met me? I know. Right. How did I not get glitter? You know, there were so many that traveled from other cities Absolutely. and even other states. Absolutely. People yes. driving by honking in protest, mm -hmm. uh, not protest, sorry, in support, yeah, because there were times when time. I stood out there with my signs, and they're mm -hmm. like, you know, waving, and, and there was that gentleman, I thought he was so awesome on the bike. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because there were we had what over a thousand in attendance. There were oh, absolutely right. Uh, I've heard close to two thousand. Well, there were like near to three thousand yeah, that I wanted to be know, there. So. Yeah. So you had um, well over a thousand in attendance mm -hmm. through, and we got there as early as eight. And there was this gentleman we on a bike. Oh, that's true. Well, we were. Um, you know, we the gentleman on the bike because you had to park so far away, and he's giving people rides back and forth. Yes. And it was the, it just, the community. There were people that brought out food and water. Making Absolutely. sure everybody I mean, was hydrated. There was we a first aid kit stand. Yeah, no. we had people contacting us for that. We yeah. had, I had one gentleman pull me aside and he said, you know, you know it's bad when a redneck's out here protesting this church. He's like, I made my son come. It's Father's Day. He has to do what I want. And <laughs> he is, drove from somewhere like was, yes. Lodi or, you know, somewhere far out. Those were his words. I'm not using the term redneck pejoratively. I'm right, quoting. right. He actually um, said that. He said that. And so, I, you know, we did. We had a lot of allies there. We had a lot of people from the faith community there. We had, you know, it really did sort of bring everybody together. And I think that's, at least for love is love, that's what we try to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. That's what we, you know, because I just love, I know it sounds cheesy, I get it, but love is so much more <laughs> powerful. Like it, no, it, it, is. Really is it really when is when you can respond to somebody in a positive and a loving way. You know, I mean, afterwards I sat down and I talked with one of the, um, counter protests who the guy that's at every rally with you know the pedophile sign and I had a conversation with him and it didn't go my way um I obviously didn't change his mind no, and that, that was you won't and I just sat down and I said why do you hate us so much and I don't understand and in all honesty he was open to having a conversation he was reasonable whereas you know screaming and yelling in his face no I obviously don't agree with his opinions yes I think his beliefs are wrong but yelling and screaming at him isn't going to lead to a conversation, and conversations and approaching people the right way are how you change people's minds. Agreed. So. Because I think that was one of the things that really struck me was the comments that that particular ba uh, pastor was saying about he kept referring to them as 50 pedophiles that were killed. Right. As just assuming. The worst thing you can do is assume and, and spread the ignorance because Absolutely. pedophiles knows no gender liking. A pedophile is a pedophile, right? Exactly. Well, statistically, pedophiles are primarily heterosexual. There you go. So look at the stats, right? Right. Um, and and there was a church there that even opened their door so we could use the restroom. Yes, yes. lifting up Jesus Christ Church in the same business park. Thank you, thank lifting you. up Jesus Christ Church for that. That was incredible. <laughs> and we incredible. had some people that attended that went and um, took them a thank you card yesterday. Absolutely. And, you know, thank them for their generosity, and people wrote on their Facebook page, and, and some you know, other actual, some other people, um, some other businesses in the complex had offered 
the use of their facilities, which I cannot remember their name, but thank you. Thank you so to much. whoever you were. You know, and I did a video as well, just on my phone, to post onto my YouTube, my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. My first time being, I'm just being an activist. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize I should have disabled comments early on because <laughs> the hate yeah. that came out. And the thing is, is that video doesn't show anything that would render the hate other than they just were mad that we were there. Yeah, right. And they were just uneducated, hateful, spiteful comments. And eventually I was like, disabled because it was pointless. Mm. And I was fielding these like on the hour every day. This is my first, I mean, I can see why, in my opinion, these protests are so important. Because now you know with your community coming together, Sacramento, I'm so proud of, I'm so proud of Sacramento. Oh, absolutely. Um, amazing. Right? I've never been so proud. I mean, the last time I've seen the Sacramento community pulled together like that outside of a pride was the no hate um, times that we were protesting. And that wasn't me. That was Tina Reynolds and other, right. other in, uh, individuals that were doing that. And I want to be like on Tina Reynolds status, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think you are getting there if you are not already there, John. So, yeah, I, I really I'm, do. That's why I'm learning so much from Bev because, you know, I'm, I want to work with her organization now and continue my efforts and we're going to rock this. Well, and, you know, <laughs> and, the, and the importance of it too, I wanted to touch on is um, how much it affects not just adults, it goes all the way down to youth, mm -hmm. the youth LGBTQ community who are the more... Um, more susceptible to this. I mean, you, you've got some stats here, Beverly, for, thank you for bringing that. And basically with the LGBTQ youth, more than three times as likely to use illegal drugs than non-LGBTQ youth, right? More than three times as likely to engage in unprotected sexual behaviors that put them at ri increased risk for HIV and other sexually transmitted infections than non-LGBTQ youth. Can I, just on that statistic, yeah. a lot of that has to do with the fact that 40, approximately 40% 40 of our nation's homeless youth identify as LGBTQ. And so some of that has to do with, um, you know, them needing to survive on the streets. Correct. And so that's where I, I don't want, I just don't want it to come across as, um, it, you know, they're just acting out or being promiscuous. Correct. I There's a reason behind it. Yes. Absolutely. Neither mm -hmm. six times is likely to have a high levels of depression, more than eight times likely to have attempted suicide. That's right. True. And LGBTQ youth commit suicide approximately every five hours and 48 minutes in yeah. this country. Yeah, it, it, that, that was from a 2005, the National Runway Switchboard estimated And that. I'm sure it's higher because after the And passage, that was 2005. Right, after the passage of HB2 in North Carolina earlier this year, um, suicide calls to trans hotlines increased three times. Th wow. Three times over. So our kids are desperate. You know, they are dying every day. You know, and, and I read that off of because you, you supplied me a lot of information. Um, not a whole lot, of course, that we can go to because we only have so much time on this show. Mm -hmm. But it was astounding. There were quotes from young um, LGBTQ youth in foster care that were dealing with social workers who were basically telling them they were at fault if they got attacked because of their lifestyle. You know, beaten daily. Um, uh, bleach put in their drinks by other kids simply because of them being gay, bisexual, lesbian. I mean, that's really where it starts. And so, right. you know, like when I went back to when I was reading the hate comments, it, it's, a, it's, it just, it's fear, isn't it? When it comes down to it, it's, it's fear. I think it's fear. And for me, you know, if you saw these kids leaving the church at the protest, I, I mean, it was scary, and there was one little girl who was walking out, and she was hold it, just holding up her Bible as she was walking through. And I remember that. When they're, they're, you're referring it, to the ones that were coming into the service and coming, coming out, of the, out of the service. Right. And, you know, for me, statistically, at least one of the children in that church community is going to identify as LGBTQ. Right. At, at least one. And they'll be closeted, mostly. And if for that youth, if they are in a crisis moment, and they stop, and they can think about that and be like, it's okay, I'm gonna be okay, then that makes it all, all worth it. I mean, if one life is touched by that or if one life is saved by that, that makes it all worth it because that child is just constantly receiving those messages of hate. And, right. You know, they're internal, we all internalize those messages as children, whether they're positive or negative, that's what, you know, kids are sponges. And so if they can, even they're, though they're being indoctrinated, remember just, this positive and this you're not alone and that you're loved, I think that's huge to why we choose to stand up the way that we do. Well, well it even, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, and I was just gonna piggyback on that was, 
you know, when we are our youth, when we are kids, and we identify as LG, LGBTQ, in that very same instant, we are then taught to hide. We're taught to lie, and we are self-preserving. We're, we're afraid from our families. We're afraid at our community gatherings. We're afraid at church. We're afraid at school. Yeah. So we turn in, and then that is where we start to form this disconnect. Our, our cognitive dissonance is where that just explodes because we have this life that we want to live, but we can't come out into the community and do that because in California it might be okay, but you know what happens in Ohio? What happens in Arizona? What happens in the Bible Belt? And, and that's where a lot of the drug abuse happens. That's where a lot of the unprotected sex, because I mean, these children are in effect reaching out for someone to just accept them. And they're not, they don't feel that safety. And it's just the statistics are mind boggling and they're depressing. And I mean, to just again, piggyback on what you were saying is it's having lived through that and experienced that and been able to have the family that I do, for which I'm very thankful. Um, I want to be able to make that life and that transition from the closet into society and what truly living your life can be. I want to make that easier for people. And I think that's one thing that you and I both share is that, you know, these, these youngsters, they don't have a voice and they don't have the abil ability to care for themselves the way that adults can sometimes. And the whole point of this, this protest was to shed light on that kind of fact. And I think that it's, you know, I mean, hate crimes happen every day. Transgender women of color are 40% more likely to be victims of hate crimes. Um, you know, they do, they happen every single day all across this country. And I think that it's important to remember that. And literally it's because of pe who people are. So, you know, people are being attacked and murdered literally for existing, for their very existence. And it's, you know, it's got to change. It's, I think, the last statistic I saw, there have been 25 trans women of color murdered this year. I, that's unacceptable. I mean, it's unacceptable for one person to be murdered for who they are. But, you know, people don't always talk about it. People don't, aren't always aware of what's happening out there. And there are, there are hate crimes every day, all across this country. And it's whether or not they get reported or how they get reported. Mm -hmm. And like you said in the beginning, you know, the thought about the murders in Orlando, that they were, you know, terrorist attacks. And quite frankly, that's the media subjugating the issue. That's right, the media exactly. taking it. We're not going to make it an anti-LGBT or an LGBTQ hate crime. We're not going to make it a hate crime spe specifically against the QPOC community. We're going to make it about terrorism because that's where we can draw on the viewers. Correct. Because exactly. people aren't going to focus on, you know, oh, it's just those people again. And so part of this is it's important not to let that happen because we all know how the media twists things and makes it well, what they want to be. And not just the media. You had another statistic here about laws. And there are currently over 160 anti-LGBTQ bills pending in 31 states, trying to actually make it a law against people for who they love. Including California. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> You're there, asking so us that question. I'm just, it's rhetorical. No one's really asking, right? And hopefully all you out there agree. So this is the thing. You're not done. No. By, don't you have another one coming up? We out? have another um, protest rally in love planned for July 30th. Um, they are having their Red Hot Preachers Conference at Verity Baptist Church, and this is when Pastor Stephen Anderson, who is Jimenez's mentor, um, the pastor from Texas, and another pastor will all be here for this conference. And um, so we're planning another rally in love. They all have shared the same beliefs and the same, you know, more of us should have been murdered, you know, that LGBTQ people are dogs, just terrible things. I can't yeah, Steve Anderson is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> and if you want to know how John feels about that, go to his Facebook page, because you posted a personal message, which already reached, what, 1,400 viewers in like uh, a day. Yeah. I will definitely be there, and it's my birthday, but I don't care. We will be giving him a lovely welcome to Sacramento <laughs> and offering him words of love. Yes, Rainbow we will. Rainbow cupcakes. And Are you glitter back I will ask them personally. Okay. Oh no gosh. peanuts. You are Allergies. so funny. <laughs> well, um, I'd like to thank you both for coming and being guests on the show and talking about such an important 
hot but important topic. And I want to thank you, the viewers, for being here, and also to remind you to check out the YouTube page, the YouTube channel for uh, Soapbox. You just go to YouTube.com and put in Soapbox Sacramento. I'm your host, Mickey Angeline, signing off. Thank you. Can we just talk? Oh, you know. okay. But no, so no, seriously, that's gonna be like the best birthday present ever. <laughs>